story of Bambi tugged at your heart, you'll certainly appreciate this one. A couple from Benton County found this little guy standing next to his mother on the side of the interstate. Injured and orphaned wild animals have a second chance thanks to Walden's Puddle Wildlife Rehab and some volunteers. The countdown is on for a rare bird to regain its freedom. For the past month, officials at the Walden's Puddle Wildlife Center have been nursing an injured night heron back to health. And now the bird is just minutes away from trying out his new leg repaired by modern technology. Blinded birds and injured squirrels are full of life again, along with 30 fawns saved this year alone at Walden's Puddle. The trained staff at Walden's Puddle nursed these animals back to health using incubators in a full emergency room located downstairs at the center in Jolton. You're gathering up little babies and bringing them in, and we take them and bring them back to their full health and growth and release them back. It's a, it's a very important work that we do here. Life-saving to be exact. In everybody's life, when they take that moment to care for something in need, smaller than ourselves, that something magical happens. And there's not anybody out there that hasn't found a little baby squirrel or a bunny or a bird that's hit the window. And when they take that step and they do call us and we take that animal in, it can be a life-changing experience. They'll n never be the same again. <laughs> The most important thing we want people to know is that we're here for the animals that need to be here, but we want the animals to be reunited with their families when at all possible. If you find a baby bird that's not injured, put it back in the nest. That's perfectly fine. That's the best thing to do. You know, we always want to get the baby squirrels back with the mamas, the baby bunnies back in the nest, you know, the baby fawn with their mom. We don't want to raise them unless mm -hmm. there is no other choice. There is no federal or state funding, so people who care support Walden's Puddle through donations. Hi, my name is Joyce Peck, and I'm the in kind volunteer coordinator at Walden's Puddle. I'm also a member of the board. We have people here who volunteer from all walks of life. We have people from our senior community, veterans, school groups, church groups, 4 H, scouts. Anyone who's interested in helping with animals, with the environment that we live in, and want to help us in this cause, come to volunteer, and we welcome all of them. Hi, I'm Carolyn Pendarvis. I'm with Walden's Puddle Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center. And I'm glad that you're all here today. I'm going to share a little bit about what Walden's Puddle does and what rehabilitation is here in Tennessee. And that's always our goal as rehabilitators, to put the animal and reunite them back with their families. I'm a teacher. That's what I do in my full-time job. But I volunteer at Walden's Puddle as their educator. Uh, it was a great fit for me because I think it's great that we teach kids at an early age about ecology and about our changing environment and it, it's really a it's really a good way to get the wildlife in there and, and uh, teach them at an early age what they need to do to make smart choices. Because Walden's Puddle doesn't receive any uh, funding from the federal government, we rely on the generosity of those in the community to be able to survive. So we've, we're working with the elementary schools to be able to meet the need of both our wish list, which is the items that Walden's Puddle needs on a daily basis just to survive. We need more teachers. We need more people who have a love of animals. We need those people to come in and participate in the program. And now, I know that handling animals is not for everybody, and there, you don't have to be able to handle animals. We're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to motivate you. We're going to give you the skills that you need. All you need is the passion and the drive and be willing to speak with other people about, about the mission that Walden's Puddle has. Every animal has a different diet, so we have to make sure that we read every chart. Just like in a hospital, we have to read the charts for every animal. So what we do now are our turtles. There's certain things that they can't have and certain things that they can, and these are uh, some of the fruit that we can put with it, or vegetables. We'll put in about a spoonful of some baby food meat, which is really important, good for turtle food is cauliflower. So today we're going to give them a chunk and they'll actually just kind of take a bite of this. This is some calcium because of their shell and this will help. This is our vitamin water. Anything that they're lacking would be in the vitamin water as well. We're ready to go in and start feeding them.
education department is responsible for taking care of those animals that are non-releasable, and those are the animals that have injuries that keep them from being released back into the wild, which is always the goal at Walden's Puddle, but realistically that doesn't always happen. Uh, we do have several animals right now that are considered our animal ambassadors. I'm holding today Carson, who's our eastern screech owl, Maverick, who is one of our birds of prey, American Kestrel, who's one of the falcons. Her name is Phoenix. We have Martha, who's been with us for quite a while. And we have Chester, who is also uh, Eastern Box Turtle. We have Radar, who's been with us for quite a while. We have a Broadwing Hawk. Well, the last advice I give anybody, if you love wildlife, and you really are looking at a place to volunteer to participate, Walden's Puddle is a great connection for you. Uh, we'll give you the tools that you need. We just want them you to have the desire uh, to make a change in the community, to make a change in their community. Hi, I'm Joanne Jellop, and uh, I have been with Walden's Puddle since 1998. My actual job, I guess, is receptionist at this point. I consider myself to be an ambassador for Walden's Puddle. If you're interested in helping Walden's Puddle, we have something for you. I'm Trish. I volunteer here once a week. Uh, right now, I'm folding laundry. Okay, Megan, so this is Singer, Red Tail Hawk, and he, as far as we know right now, he is still releasable. We keep the nursery bedding for the babies separate from the general laundries. During baby season, I've come in and the laundry has literally been piled up to here so we could really use. Even if you just want to fold laundry, it'd be great to have any extra help. We need help in every area. You start with a huge pile of laundry and then you end up with a clean table. And you can feel good about it. So again, we encourage you to look at our website, see what interests you, send in your application and come in and see what we're all about. I'm going to school for wildlife biology and I'll be doing my specialization in avian conservation and management. Walden's Puddle also has an excellent internship program. We have ongoing contracts with Columbia State and Volunteer State Community College's veterinary tech programs, Austin P, Vanderbilt, and Belmont. With environmental ed students, wildlife biology students, pre-vet students, they all know that Walden's Puddle is the only place they can get hands-on wildlife care information. Through my years with Walden's Puddle, I put together benefits, and they were a lot of fun to do. I'd call my friends and say, hey, you want to come out and pick and sing and have a great time to raise some money for one of the best organizations in Nashville? And they would say, absolutely, yes. Musicians are the best. I'm Bettina Bauer-Schwan. I'm the animal care director here at Walden's Puddle. Uh, I started at Walden's Puddle 13 years ago. I am a third generation wildlife rehabilitator. My actual background degree is in human physical therapy. Uh, but I, like I said, left that 13 years ago to concentrate on wildlife full time. I'm also a Reiki master, definitely a big proponent of natural healing methods and we use those here in conjunction with allopathic methods. So we try to hit all the bases and make sure that we give every animal every chance we can to heal. My philosophy is kind of the least that works right now we're lucky because this has become a science and it is a profession and so there there's more research being done out there and and there is continuing education that you have to to stay on top of now too many human beings believe they are apart from nature uh, instead of a part of nature my job as animal care director is to provide the plan of care for the animal so that when an animal comes in and once it's assessed and evaluated, I make the decision, is this an animal that does need to go to the clinic and have an x-ray or be checked out by the vet? Hi, I'm Laurie Campbell and I'm an animal care technician. 
Hi, I'm Rebecca Powers and I'm Animal Care Supervisor. We're just packing up some animals to go to the clinic and right now we're going to be grabbing a great horned owl that has a broken wing. He was probably hit by a car. He was found in the parking lot of a gas station. He's not very happy about it, as you can see. <laughs> I'm Dr. Mike Corwin, and uh, I own Airport Animal Clinic. And my staff and I have been treating wildlife since 1992. We donate our services to fix what we can, and then uh, rely on Walden's Puddle to, uh, to actually do the rehabilitation, to do the hard work. Surgery is kind of an instant gratification business, so we know immediately whether or not what we did works, and, and as opposed to the, the rehabbing, which is difficult and time consuming and, and may drag on for months. We'll do um, five or six surgeries a day. We do as much as we can fit in, in, in the time available. I monitor the progress of the animal and, and change the, the plan as needed, and the animal care techs, in turn, are the ones who carry out that, that plan of care. What you spend at Whole Foods and Green Hills today could benefit a local organization that cares for injured wildlife. The retailer is donating 5% of the day's net sales to Walden's Puddle. Lori Mitchell has the story. So I love animals and the environment. Jody Bean discovered a really good reason to grocery shop when she came to Whole Foods in Green Hills Wednesday. To give is always a great added bonus. Part of what she spends will go to Walden's Puddle, Middle Tennessee's only professionally staffed wildlife rehabilitation and education center. The whole day, people will be buying and enjoying Whole Foods, and at the end of it, they will present us with 5% of the proceeds for the day as their charity for the day. So it's amazing. Several charities applied for Community Day, but Walden's Puddle was chosen by the folks who work here. And many of the employees are coming up and saying that they voted for us. Lane Brody, the organization's CEO, couldn't be more thrilled. This will put food in babies' mouths, the little babies that will be coming in this, this season. Brody is using the opportunity to get the word out about what Walden's Puddle does. Lori Mitchell, Nashville's News 2. Today we are um, re-nesting a great horned owlet and we're actually fostering this one into a um, nest that we did about a week ago, 10 days ago. The original pair of great horned owlets came out of this tree about two weeks ago during a storm. There were two babies, one sibling was killed, and so we came out and made a new nest out of a laundry basket and put the re remaining, the live uh, great horned owlet back up in the nest. According to the homeowners, the parents have been flying in and out and they hear them and it, it appears to our best knowledge that everything is fine. We got in another little great horned owlet from the um, Stones River Battleground. When I went down to check out the nest site, it's uh, not an active nest. There is no activity at the nesting site. Luckily, we are going to be able to put this great horned owlet in with the original great horned owlet that we um, re-nested because there were two originally, and there usually are two. Uh, so they will be siblings. Now I'm getting the little guy out and I'm going to place him or her it in the uh, his transport, which is a pillowcase. Come here, little one. <laughs> there we go. Okay. This is a great horned owlet about 10 days, two weeks old.
Okay, he's ready. ready? Yep. Right now I'm sending up uh, the mice, kind of the peace offering, <laughs> the positive reinforcement to put in the basket with the new baby, the edge of the basket and uh, the camera so you can get a shot of it. No, oh, she's back in the top of the tree. The two of them, I guess you would call it bonding because they were touching their beaks together with one another. It was really, really cool to watch. And then that parent just about 10 feet above my head sitting there watching everything I did. The young one that was up there, uh, they're feeding it well. It had half a squirrel in the nest. So, and I just put those four mice in there with them so they should be good to eat for a day or two. that parent, I was glad to see the parent right there on top of it. The first time since I've been doing this that um, the parents were coming in that close to us, or to me. <laughs> it's kind of exciting and scary at the same time, you know, knowing the damage they can do if they take a notion to do it. History has proven, you know, that they are always accepted when you, you re-nest. Um, we've never had one kicked out or, or anything like that, so um, it should be just fine. They should just accept the fact that there's just another clacking beak to, to feed and, um, and take care of it. Walden's Puddle facilitates and handles a large number of cases annually and is invaluable as far as providing rehabilitative services for Middle Tennessee wildlife. Walter Cook, Wildlife Coordinator of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. The world should be a better place for you of being in it. And um, this is how I do it, by uh, returning these animals back to the wild. So that is that's what is important to me about being here. The symbol of America and a once endangered species is growing in numbers around the Cumberland River. Now the bald eagle has several nests in our area which means more people will be spotting the national bird. But one Montgomery County farmer got a closer look than he ever imagined, and as News Channel 5's Kim Gebbia tells us, he likely helped to save the eagle's life. As a Montgomery County cattle farmer, Matt Cole sees a lot of the same. Feeding cows, moving cows, working cows, cutting hay. Cows, hay, horses, his dog Reese. but on Monday. Originally when I first seen it, it was standing right here on these uh, kind of stumps. I knew what it was, but it's kind of one of those moments you see it and you're like, I really don't believe that. <laughs> you know, it takes a minute for it to, you know, to hit you. Cole quickly realized the male adult eagle was injured. Bird typically when you get close to them, they just jump up and fly. And he held his wings out and just ran. <laughs> When we went to the clinic with him, um, we discovered that, you know, he doesn't have any broken bones, but he does have some swelling and bruising. The once endangered species, still federally protected, is now in the care of Walden Puddle Rehab in Jolton. Rescuers were relieved the injuries didn't appear to be at the hands of a human. It just seems like he hit something with enough tension in it to bounce off and bruise him up pretty good. But before the bird that symbolizes so much to the country and to the nearby screaming eagles at Fort Campbell was rushed away, Cole held it with a photo as proof of his not-so-average day on the cattle farm. You know, he asked me if I wanted to hold it. You know, I jumped at the chance. I mean, you know, it's our nation's bird. It's an endangered species. How often do you have the opportunity to hold it? It is not every day you see a bald eagle. The rare creature is native to Tennessee, and one group is making sure they are here to stay. A Jolton group called Walden's Puddle specializes in caring for sick, injured, and orphaned wildlife. Two months ago, they took in a baby bald eagle that had suffered an injury. 
The folks at Walden's Puddle nursed the creature back to health and today released it back into the wild. Four weeks ago, he was flailing around a Madison parking lot with a broken leg and only days to live. Either one of two things happened. Either this bird was flying and accidentally hit a high wire, which almost never happens, but can happen sometimes. He's going to be very eager to get out and be able to fly again and go where he wants to go and be in control of the situation. His road to recovery was no small feat. It required surgery similar to the kind performed on a human being. We anesthetized the bird and cleaned up the scar tissue with, that was in there, and then we placed a pin right down the middle of the bone. Be able to, to fix that bird up and you finally get to see him fly away or in this case he's going to hop off into the pond or the lake or the swamp wherever he wants to go and, and it just, it's a wonderful feeling. This is our charity. This is our little corner of the world that we're trying to make better. Won't that be something to see him fly again? Ah, yes. The bald eagle is a symbol of freedom and a Woodlawn family had the privilege of seeing an eagle set free after first helping to nurse it back to health. Channel 4's Forrest Sanders was there for a moment one family will never forget. We would have done anything to help something that if I find something injured or that's just my nature. The crowd is gathered with cameras ready, all watching, waiting for the eagle to be set back into the wild. It's a story that started last month when 13-year-old Peyton Caldwell went running down toward the creek outside her home. What she found was an injured bald eagle. I was afraid she wasn't going to make it. The very next day, the Caldwells put the eagle in the care of the Walden's Puddle Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. Today, the moment has finally arrived the Caldwell family has been waiting for. The gate is open. One second, two seconds, and then... It's just exhilarating. I mean, it's just amazing to see something like that. It's a good feeling. The eagle perches itself on a branch over the Caldwell farm leaving a crowd to just watch and admire. It's a special symbol for the Caldwell family. Peyton's father is Lieutenant Colonel Jason Caldwell and a Rock War veteran with the Screaming Eagles. Really proud to be a Screaming Eagle. As the Eagle takes flight, headed back home to the wild, the Caldwells are left with a sight they'll always remember. I mean, to go from she couldn't fly or get off the ground and wet and to just, she looks so beautiful.